Hello, everybody. Um, I am uh, doing this vlog from my bedroom because my roommate is downstairs and she's watching TV or something like that. So, <clears throat> um, I wanted to do this uh, a few days ago, but um, <laughs> I dropped my phone in a uh, in a Tupperware container full of water. And it was all jacked up, so I couldn't do anything about that. Um, but uh, I guess I'll I'll tell you about my my day today. Uh, it's Friday. It's the nineteenth. It's Juneteenth. Um, the day that a um, hundred and fifty five years ago, I think, um, all of the slaves were freed officially in America. Uh, which is awesome. So that's a cool, it's a cool thing. Uh, it's a state holiday in Philadelphia. It is being, um, it's in the process of being turned into a national holiday um, in the, in the U.S., um, which I I definitely support. I think that's that's a a huge important holiday that should be celebrated for sure. Um. So today was super cool. Um, I had uh, I went to a uh, a radiothon um, thing. I was volunteering to um, accept donations for um, for the VMC uh, with WMGK. 102.9 I think uh, is a classic radio station classic rock radio station uh, in Philly um, which is great because I love classic rock um, and it was great there were lots of people donated uh, lots of vets called in um, a few uh, active service members called in and donated and it's awesome. And some civilians called in that um, you know have relatives that are veterans and stuff like that. So that's awesome. I mean, um, the the thing that um, uh, thing that amazes me is you know um, in this in this time um, sometimes it's really easy to focus on all of the bad. Uh, that's that's going on uh, in the world right now, and you know it it kind of overshadows the um, sometimes overwhelming abundance of good in the world. Um, you know, uh, I think every every human being is born with. A immense capacity for good and compassion and um, respect for their fellow man. Um, it's a it's a nature versus nurture debate, um, and I think nobody's born uh, evil or selfish or um, you know a bad person. I think. Um, we instinctively have compassion for our fellow man. So it, and and that my experience at the telethon or the radiothon really um, uh, brought that to light for me, at least. Um, so that was cool. Um, but the, uh, you know, that was cool. And um, when I got back to work, uh, I got back to the office around one. 30, I think. Um, and we had another tenant association meeting. Um, got a lot done, which is great. Um, and then I had a, uh, a meeting with a client that um, I had been working with for like four weeks uh, trying to get access to his um, card. Like, um, he is with a terrible terrible bank with just the, the worst customer service known to man um i've never experienced such 
uh, insufficient customer service before in my entire life. Um, you know, and it, it pissed me off. Like, the, the, the lady must have been, like, she must have been reading from a script saying, like, okay, if somebody says something that you can't do anything about, you just say sorry, like, 15 times. And she was like... I'm so very sorry that I can't help you with this issue. And I'm like, it. she said it, honestly, she said it 15 times, and it was driving me bonkers. I wanted to reach through the phone and throttle her. But um, we called three times during this meeting, um, and uh, and, you know, uh, granted, this was the end of the day. Uh, it was uh, like 3.30 when I met with him. Um, so I was tired and I was ready to ready to go home and start my weekend. Um, but I had been struggling. My client and I have been struggling with this bank for so long. I was like, you know what? I feel good about it. Let's keep this going. Let's keep this momentum going. And um, we called the second time. Still couldn't get the, the results that we wanted. Uh, hung up, called a third time. While I was on the phone with Social Security, I was I, ha I had my desk phone dialed into Social Security on hold, waiting for them to pick up. And my, uh, my work cell phone that that my job provided me with um i was calling them i was calling the bank um and we finally got through to the bank um and you know what we were working on was we were trying to get um my client access to his account he had a debit card from this bank that i'm not going to say the name of uh but it sucks it's it's a terrible stupid bank who I think their company line is make customer service as bad as possible as inaccessible and terrible as humanly possible um, and in that regard I think they did really really well with it because they are amazing at sucking they're just terrible um, so we finally got through, um, and we were able to order, uh, this client another card, another debit card, um, that would be attached to the same account as the expired card, which is what the issue was. He had a new card, but there was no money on it because his direct deposits from social security and, and the VA were going into this old card, this old account that was expired so we couldn't access any of that money but like he came to, he came to me uh like five minutes before the tenant association meeting the the my my meeting i had to go to it too and he was like hey i got a uh i got another deposit into my old account from social security today and i was like oh that sucks that's it's like um it's like if your grandparents gave you like five hundred dollars for Christmas or your birthday or something like that. But it's in a block of liquid nitrogen. Like, you know, <laughs> you can't access... It's $500, but you can't access it. Um, so that was really frustrating for me and for him. I can't believe how frustrating it's been for him. Um, and we finally got the card ordered, and I was so happy, <laughs> and... I, I couldn't stop myself from smiling and you know even with the the mask on I could see my my client smiling because he heard exactly what I heard everything's gonna be all right in three to five business days he's gonna get his new card and he's gonna have access to all of his funds so I'm so happy that that we're we're done with this and you know he can go back to um, you know, being able to afford things, um, you know, um, so that was, uh, that was basically it. I, I didn't meet, I didn't meet with hardly any clients. I met with two clients today. Um, other than that, I was doing the radiothon, um, 
sorry, I met with three clients today. Um, and then the radio, and the radiothon in the morning. Um, so it was a busy but productive day. Um, a good, a good Friday. Um, good way to end off the week. Um, but I have another thing to show you. I wanted to show you this a couple days ago, but, um, again, my phone was fucked up, so, um, I got a knife. Still, I wanted to do a cool unboxing, but I couldn't wait. I had to, I had to open it. I was too excited. So, this is the, um, I think it's Finlang, Finlang, F-I-N-L-A-N-G, um, Finland making knife. It's a fixed blade. Um, it's about eight inch blade. Um, really cool, ornate kind of handle on there. I like the, the guard, the, um, what they would call on a sword, it would be a hilt, um, you know, but it's a knife. So, oof, man, that is such a beautiful knife. It's really nice. Columbia Jinlang. It's Jinlang, not Finlang. Jinlang, sorry. J I N F L, or J I N L A N G company. Um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, it's a. Uh, not not real wood, um, you know, it's a condensed plastic, but, um, you know, it's still, I, I mean, it's, I've been messing around with it for a few days, and it's, it's pretty damn sturdy. Um, really, really sharp, um, you know, let's see if I have some paper around here. Um, Let's take this box right here, okay? I got this empty tissue box right here. Um, and I will... Nope, that didn't work. So... It's... I just cut this box in half. Like... <laughs> it is super sharp. Um, you know... I could definitely shave with it if I wanted to. Um, you know, just a just a really, really good knife. Um, I think it's like 13 inches, point uh, to um, point to butt right here. Um, it's a really nice knife. Really nice uh, sheen on it. Um, you know, you can you can really see your reflection in the knife, which is cool. Um, I always wanted a knife that, like, you know, you can, like, you know, this this part right here um, is a little bit faded. Um, it's not like a mirror kind of metallic uh, thing like this part is right here. Um, but you know this is this is a pretty close second. So um, the handle is a little bit small, uh, if I'm being honest. Um, but I do think that is just like in comparison to the last knife that I got, which was this guy. Um, this handle is beefy and like you know my whole hand doesn't cover it. You know, you can see the bottom, you can see the top. This, right here, you know, can pretty much, I can pretty much cover the entire handle like that, and that makes for kind of an, an uncomfortable feel, you know? Um, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. Um, you know, it's, it's nice. And it's, oh, man, it's so sharp. I've cut myself twice already playing around with this knife. Um, onto the sheath. The sheath is really nice. Um, you know, there, there are subtle differences between this sheath and, like, a really shitty one. You know, it, it's made with practically the same material as a really shitty sheath. Um, but I think 
the main difference is the stitching and the um you know there's like there's like this stuff in the middle that is a little bit thinner uh, a little bit weaker but still pretty pretty rigid material uh, and then this part on the side that stitches it together um and it makes all the difference you know you, you can have this on your belt and just fucking you know shove it in there and in, you don't have to worry about like poking through the bottom of the sheath which i have i have done with a few of my other fixed blade knives just kind of like throwing it back in the sheath like that um but it's nice i like it um i think one little piece is a little unnecessary um there are two straps for the hilt there's the button and then there is the velcro right underneath which sits right above the hilt um which is great i mean like what i wish i guess would be that the button thingy would be right above the hilt and then the velcro thing didn't exist that would be you know in a perfect world that would be how it would pan out um in the future i might just cut the uh the velcro piece off but you know whatever this this isn't a combat knife or anything like that. It's a hunting knife. It's just you know doesn't need to be readily accessible right away. You know you can take you can take the extra second and a half that it takes to velcro and then button you know and just pull it out. Um, but I really like it. It's really nice. Super sharp. The the blade uh, shape is pretty cool looking. You know, definitely, uh, definitely, like, kind of a Damascus shape, um, if you're familiar with, uh, a Damascus sword. Um, it has a little bit of a dip, and then a full kind of, um, arch at the top, towards the top. So, you know, this part right here is where you would, like, start your cut. Um, if you were cutting a rope or, you know, something under tension, you would put the, the thing you're trying to cut right in the crook of that bend and then, whoosh, you know, pull up and it's going to slice right through it. It's super, super sharp and, you know, just a really smart blade design. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Um, I hope everybody is, uh is staying safe during uh this whole quarantine shit um pennsylvania uh is going into green potentially um yeah knock on wood um around july 2nd so who knows maybe uh maybe we'll be back to some semblance of normal uh, fairly soon, so, um, you know, hold out, don't, uh, don't get too impatient to rush back to normal life, um, you know, you want to, um, you know, things, things need to go back to normal at some point, um, but you shouldn't be in such a hurry to get back to normal that you put yourself and the ones you love and others at risk. Um, so, you know, just be safe. Um, and until uh, I get a new knife or till something else crazy happens at work, um, I, will, uh, I will see you next time. All right? Peace.